going on guys? Cameron here with Canadian Gamer. Once again, this video is brought to you by Puma. Another episode of Coffee and Conversation. Now, before we get into today's topic, I do want to show you guys what I've been playing all weekend. By the way, I hope you're all having a great Mother's Day weekend. I've been playing a lot of my Game Boy Advance. This has to be, again, one of my most favorite consoles of all time. And uh, I love being able to play the original Game Boy games on this. Um, but right now I'm playing, I got into it on the weekend here, playing Wario 4. It's fantastic if, if you guys haven't played it. I'm a huge fan of the Wario series. And this game, although it's considered a puzzle game, it does have platforming elements as well. Uh, and it also has some great boss battles. So it's a fantastic game. Like I said, enjoying the Game Boy Advance. This is the... Uh, AGS 101 model. I've got two of them. I've got the SpongeBob Square Pants uh, edition as well. So fantastic. The battery lasts forever on these things. I love it. So today's topic of conversation, we're going to talk about does it make sense to buy physical when you already own the digital copy of the game? Now, one of the reasons why I'm bringing this up is because, you know, there's a lot of people that are excited about Streets of Rage 4 being released, not only physically, but uh, it's going to be accessible at retail, at least that's my understanding, uh, whereas initially, you know, there was, you know, basically limited run, uh, and that was your option, or digitally, so a lot of people are kind of chomping at the bit to, uh, to buy the game physically, but like I said, you know, does it make a lot of sense to run out and buy this game physically when you've already purchased it, I would presume, at full re full cost digitally? I mean, I don't think there's a, a right answer to this. It, it just it depends on the, on the situation. Um, I know myself, speaking from personal experience, um, I know when I first started out with my Xbox 360, I wasn't necessarily a, a collector at that point. I had purchased Deadly Premonition off of the Xbox Live Marketplace because I wanted to play that game. And it looked really interesting. And uh, back then, again, I wasn't so much about, you know, digital versus physical. And then <clears throat> later on, a couple of years later, um, shortly after the Xbox One came out and a lot of the 360 games were on discount at EB Games, I lucked out and I picked up Deadly Premonition for like 10 bucks. So of course, yeah, pick it up physically. You know, delete the digital copy off my hard drive and uh, and be done with it. So I think a situation like that, you know, it makes a lot of sense. I'm happy to have that game. Again, a physical copy of it. It's hard to come by. So, again, it depends on, on the situation. But I think, like, with today's, in today's day and age, I mean, if you've already per paid 40 or 50 or $60 or $70 to, digitally to buy a game... And you're going to go out and buy the game again on, on physical just so you can have it on your bookshelf. That's that's entering addiction territory. Uh, I don't care what anybody says because right now, I mean, you know, Streets of Rage 4 is an example. Is that going to be a collectible? Probably not. I don't think, <clears throat> I don't think any games nowadays are going to be too collectible if I'm being honest about it. And that's, that's one of the many problems with limited run games. But uh, more to the point, like I said, if you're if you're constantly buying games digitally, and then you're going after the games physically as well, uh, I don't know. I, I don't think that's right. Um, I don't think that's a, a healthy financial decision, if you ask me. <clears throat> but you know, if you know a game is coming out digitally, you know the date that it's being released, but there has not been a physical announcement and then later on after the fact you find out it's coming out physical i guess there's an argument to be had especially if you could pick up the game you know at a discounted price but there's like i said there's a lot of collectors out there that uh they can't wait to play the game so they buy it you know day one they, they, they download it before it's even released and play it you know the minute that they can and they wait for the physical copy to come in the mail if they've ordered it or you know, down the line, they'll go to the store and buy the physical. I, see that again? That's not that's not a healthy, like I said, not a healthy financial decision 
Uh, I guess it depends on your financial situation, but I don't think it's right to pay $40 for digital and then go out and buy it again for 30 or 40 bucks physical just so you can have it on your bookshelf. I don't know. I think if you've got it digitally, especially in this day and age, leave it at that. Uh, choose one or the other. I don't think it makes a lot of sense to have physical and digital. It's just my opinion. Um, I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts on it, especially with how games are updated these days. Unless that's something that, like I said, for me personally, if it's a game I'm looking for for the 360, uh, I'll buy it physically. But if it's something more modern, again, I'm not into digital downloads, but I don't know. I just don't, I don't think it makes sense to have physical and digital. That's all I'm saying. Leave it in the comments below. I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts on this as well. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Take care.